Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and this video is all about the new changes to the German trees coming in 8.8. .8. Now, what you need to know is there are two new tanks, as well as significant changes to the VK3001H, and also less significant changes to the VK3601. So let's take a look at the one of the new tanks, which is the DW2, and I'm going to try and see the term. <laughs> the Durchbruchwagen 2. Okay, great. I'm pretty sure I just murdered German there, so apologies to all of my native German viewers, but I did my best. So, here you go. Here is the DW2. It is a tier 4 heavy tank. A tier 4 German heavy tank. So previously the only tier 4 German heavy tank in the game was the B2 740, as you can see here. This is no longer available in the gift shop and you can only get it through special promotions. The DW2 is fully purchasable without having a code. It's simply tier 4 in the tree as you can see here. Its guns as we can see here are shared amongst a whole wealth of tanks so it's very likely that you will have already unlocked this 5cm gun. Radio is shared amongst basically all the German tanks as you can see and the engine is shared with the VK301H and the VK201D. What this means is that if you're looking to pick it up then you won't really have to research that much experience but let's be honest it is a tier 4 heavy tank and that means that as it is a tier 4 there's not that much free experience that you will have to drop if you're a, a semi-active player. Now we can see the tank uses five crew members. Let's take a look at its stats quickly. So the DW2 can either use a 7.5cm gun or it can use a 5cm gun. Now if you use the 7.5cm gun you have very low penetration, only 43mm. So I'd recommend using the 5cm gun. Even though that its alpha is less, the rate of fire more than makes up for it. So looking at the top 5cm gun, it's got a very good rate of fire of 25 rounds a minute. Kind of okay penetration of 67mm. I mean, this thing is going to be directly competing against, for example, the Matilda. And if we look at the Matilda's gun, for example, the Matilda has 121mm of penetration. It's got slightly less alpha damage, but a slightly better rate of fire, better accuracy and better aim time. So you might be thinking maybe the DW2's got other things that it will make up for that, considering this gun is okay for tier 4, but it's, it's not Matilda okay. So what the DW2 does have is 420 hit points, which is not massive, but this is still a lot higher than, for example, the Matilda. And you guys may be asking, why are you talking about the Matilda so much? Because I feel that the Matilda really is one of the pinnacle tanks at tier 4, and I feel that any new tanks that are being incorporated into the game, does it have to be competitive with it? Well, for all you players out there who will probably be only be playing tier 4 as kind of like a shall this be a pimp tank, I'm trying to give that to you. For all the other players who are maybe thinking maybe this is a better progression up the tree than the old, German tier 4s, then maybe that is the case. We can see that the DW2 does have a 300 brake horsepower engine at the top, which means that this thing frankly leaves the Matilda as a very, very slow tank. This DW2 is pretty much capable of reaching its 35 km an hour top speed limit along the flat, and its traverse speed is 32, which is not too bad. Now, if you're expecting this tank to have ridiculous armor, I'll just move these out of the way so you can see it. You're going to be sadly mistaken. Its lower plate is massive, so when you have to come round a corner, this is where the center of your turret is, and you expose this whole area of super flat armor on the front. This lower plate is easily penetrated, almost I found even at a 45 degree angle. I'm not going to be showing you gameplay in this because it takes 5 minutes to get a game and then there's usually only about 5 tanks either side on the test server at the moment. What I will say is from my experience that basically this lower plate is garbage. It does have an MG port on the front as well which is a weak point, but really you don't even need to aim at the MG port on this tank as the lower plate can be penetrated even at a ridiculous angle. The best thing that I found to do with the DW2 is to almost over angle your armor and try and hope that they shoot your sprocket on the front that it will absorb the damage because your lower plate is that bad. 50 millimeters of hull armor all the way round on the turret and on the tank. Now the turret traverse is wonderful, 42 degrees a second, that's very quick. And it's got pretty good view range, 330 meters, that's that's pretty good for a tier 4 tank. Which means that if you have a good crew on this and you get binoculars up on it, you are going to be able to spot enemies at quite a distance. However, remember that as you are a heavy tank, that your camo rating is going to be really low. So all in all, I think this is a, a fairly standard kind of tier 4 tank. I think it's strong as it is a tier 4, but really, it's not going to be a tank that you really want to pick up over something like a Matilda, for example, if you want to have a pimp tank for carrying games. Alright, so that was the DW2. Let's take a look at the other interesting new tank, it is a tier 6 medium tank, the VK302M. And we can see the VK302M situated here in the tree. One thing that's interesting is that the M is does not link on to the 302D that you might expect. Actually, the 302M is what appears to be a panther prototype. So now you can see that this is the only way to get to the panther in the tree. So you have to go through this tank. And it kind of makes sense. Now you've got a very interesting route 
where you have to go down the heavies if you want to either go to the panther or the tiger. And then you branch out and you basically choose, do I want to go medium or do I want to go heavy? You might be thinking, well, the VK3061, that's not a heavy. Yes, it is. Now it's going to be a heavy tank, as we'll discuss later on. So let's take a look at more detail on the VK302M. Here we go. This is the tank, the tier 6, the new tier 6 German medium tank. And yeah, it does pretty much look like a panther. Now this tank has got fairly angled frontal armor and it is 60 millimeters thick, which means that angled like this, well your side armor is really bad and your rear armor is really bad at 40 and 40, but angled like this, you still do have a fairly good chance of trolling shots off your upper plate. Now, turret armor is 100 millimeters, and I'm pretty sure this mantlet is excellent. You do have a, a weak point on top of the tank that you need to watch out for. Now this tank has an excellent engine of 700 brake horsepower, and it weighs 42 tons. So a tier 6, 42 tons is quite heavy, and that's a very nice engine to have in the tank. This thing, like the Panther, like the Panther 2, and like the E50, is probably going to be quite good for ramming smaller tanks. As an example, the Cromwell weighs 28 tonnes when fully equipped. That means you're going to be able to knock 7 bells out of it with this tank, especially considering that the top speed of this new tier 6 German medium tank is 55 kilometres an hour. Now if you expected excellent traverse speed, you're going to be sadly mistaken. Even with the upgraded tracks, it's only 30 degrees a second, which means that you're going to have to get used to the German medium tanks right from the get-go and suffer with that terrible traverse speed until you reach the tier 10. Now looking at the gun, this is an excellent gun for tier 6. 2.3 second aim time is strong, 0.35 accuracy. This is a 7.5 centimeter, which has got 150 millimeters of penetration and 135 alpha damage. This is very similar to the Cromwell gun. I'll just show it to you here. Here's the 75 millimeter Vickers. Comparing it to the new 75mm on the, the German tank, you can see that the rate of fire is slightly better on the British tank, the penetration is slightly worse, the accuracy is slightly worse on the British tank, but the aim time is the same. So you need to consider that the Cromwell gun is very similar to the 302M, and I would think that this tank is pretty much like a Cromwell, really. I'd say that this is basically a Cromwell which forgoes a little bit of the speed and a little bit of the traverse to gain quite a lot of frontal armor and maybe that's the kind of tank that you want to play. The only downside for me for this tank is it's quite tall and when I like to play the Cromwell I usually like to outmaneuver my opponent and you're not really going to be outmaneuvering your opponents very easily with only 30 degrees traverse speed. Still I think this is a strong entry at tier 6 and I think it's a very interesting tank. It's one to look out for and if you like having a little bit of frontal armor so you can deal with the lower tier enemies unlike the Cromwell can then this might be the tank for you. I'll just highlight that point that the Cromwell really struggles when engaging tier 4 and 5 tanks because really they're just going to be able to penetrate over and over again. Having that extra angle on your hull armor means that really angling should be an option and maybe you're going to be able to deal with tier 4 and tier 5 tanks better in this tank than you could, especially at ranges. So those are the two new tanks. Now I want to let you look at the reworked tanks. So here is the VK301H. Now this used to be the tier 6 medium tank. It has been changed dramatically and is now the VK301H, the tier 5 heavy tank. Now, why is this tank interesting? You'd be thinking, okay, it's a tier 5 heavy tank with 50 millimeters of all-round armor. That's not very good. Okay, well, at least this has got a better turret than the DW2, which is the tank that it leads on from. It's now got 80 millimeters of frontal armor with a very thick mantle. It does have a, a terrible cupola, though, that you really will need to watch out for. Now, this thing really is not the most mobile tank. It weighs 37 tons with a 400 brake horsepower engine with 35 km an hour top speed limit. Now the traverse speed is a terrible 22 degrees a second. This thing feels like it lumbers around. It really truly feels like a heavy tank. It does have a very healthy 660 hit points though, which is amazing when you think that, for example, the M4 barely has over 400 hit points. The VK301H also has something amazing. It has got a a Conish. Now the Conish is a strong gun at tier 6 on the VK3601H. Now putting this gun at tier 5 really makes this a real contender. Now this tank may be slow, it may be lumbering, and it may not have enough hull armor to really do the business, but what this tank does have is a lot of hit points and a really good gun. Now this tank is definitely not TOG slow, and it doesn't get preferential matchmaking, which means that sometimes this is going to have to deal with tier 7 tanks. Its health doesn't really mean anything at tier 7, but when this thing goes and fights against tier 3, four and five tank. This has got a hell of a lot of hit points to have some fun with. Combine this with 360 meters view range and I think that this really could be a tank to look out for at tier five. That Conish has an amazing rate of fire with a great average damage and enough penetration to go through nearly everything that it can meet frontally.
Any tanks that it would usually struggle with to penetrate frontally, this thing can load APCR, which will give it 221mm of penetration at tier 5. This might be the best gun at tier 5 in the game. It's an absolute beast, and this new version of the 301H is definitely something to look out for. So here's the new VK3601H. This tank was known as many as one of the best tier 6 tanks in the game. There have been quite a few changes to this tank that you guys might want to know about, especially if this is one of your favourite tanks, and also about how to engage with these tanks. Now, the hit points of this tank have been increased to 950, and that's a hell of a lot of hit points to have at tier 6. And that's because this tank has been changed from a medium tank to a heavy tank. Because of that, the ventilations are going to change on it, and they're going to be more expensive. So I suggest that if you want to get your ventilation on this tank, you want to do it quickly, otherwise it's going to be more expensive next patch. You can also use the heavy spore liner, as you can see. Heavy spore liners have now been changed to also protect your crew from injuries. So this heavy spool liner will give you plus 30% protection to the crew, which is quite nice. Now, because this tank has been given extra hit points, it's the same weight, but this might pain you guys. It has lost a lot of engine power. It has lost a third of its engine power. The engine max now is now 500 brake horsepower, where previously, as far as I'm aware, it was 750. It has also lost some traverse speed. The traverse speed is now down to 24 degrees a second. However, its speed limit has been increased to 50 kilometers an hour. That means that this thing is really going to be able to motor around downhill. But due to the nerf in its engine power, don't expect it to really be reaching those 50 km an hour top speed limits, especially when you have to turn using the 24 degrees a second tracks. Now the frontal armor on this tank is the same, 100 mm, which is still very, very powerful at tier 6. And the turret armor has been unchanged as well. This tank can still use the 7.5 cm conish. It's a rate of fire, I think has been increased, though I might be mistaken, to 14 rounds a minute. That's a very healthy rate of fire with the high penetration but low alpha damage. When we compare this, for example, to the Cromwell and to the new German medium tank, the 302M, it's fairly similar, but still this Konish is a much better performer that can also load premium ammunition that does 221mm of penetration. Now the aim time on this gun is better than it was on the previous 3001H at 2.3. Remember that this tank does have some gun depression. So what do you need to know about this tank in a nutshell? Basically it's been made a heavy, they've totally reduced the engine power massively, They've reduced the traverse speed slightly, but they've increased the top speed limit of this tank. I think they've increased the rate of fire of the Konish. I think this is now a more balanced tank. I think it is what it needs to be. I think the VK3601 previously was a little too fast. And I think this is a true heavy tank that gets people ready for the Tiger. And I think just to touch on that point, just briefly, I think with the tanks that they've added, they've made the tree a lot more kind of, you're getting slightly better, you're getting slightly better, you're getting slightly better. And I think now there's less jumping around, like you jump into a tiger and it has to be played completely differently to a VK3601. And I think for many people that leads to quite a bit of disappointment. I think that they've changed the way the VK3601 works, maybe made it slightly worse in total because of the sheer drop in the mobility of the tank. But still the strength of the VK was its frontal armor and its punchy gun, and it still has that. Now you can move on to the Tiger and pick up the Fearsome 88, which is a definitive upgrade from this tank. So you might be thinking, oh wow, the VK3601 has lost its engine power. Are there any other nerfs to the German trees? Well guys, firstly, look at this model of the E75. This is the first time I've seen an E75 wrecked, and it looks like they've got new models on all the tanks. This tank looks like it's been devastated. Really nice model work by Wargaming. I think this is a really good thing. So let's make our... E75 all shiny again. Now guys, look at what they've done. They've removed the top engine from the E75, so now its top engine power is 900 brake horsepower. However, never fear, because they've increased the traverse speed dramatically, and also increased the top speed limit of this tank by a third. I've played this tank a few times, and those are the only changes to it. Really what they've done is they've made the E75 accelerate more slowly, but they've increased the traverse speed dramatically, and its speed downhill has also increased dramatically. I'd say that the changes are neither a buff nor a nerf. Basically what they've done is they've made the E75 acceleration slightly worse but increased its ability to turn and its ability to bomb it down a hill. What you'll find is the E75 is slightly worse at going up slopes. It's slightly worse at reaching its initial top speed along the flat. 
However, the traverse speed was one of the main weaknesses of this tank, and I just recently did an E75 review. If you watch that review, you know that I highlighted that basically sometimes you don't have the traverse speed to be able to angle your armor to be able to bounce multiple enemies. That should be more manageable now with the new E75. However, the E75 is going to be a fair bit slower in progressing through its acceleration and it might find it harder to keep up with some enemies that are running away from it for example. You can't really just stop, aim, shoot, start moving again. You might have to fire more on the move because once you've got the momentum going you probably don't want to lose it. There are also other significant changes to for example the E50. Here we can see that the E50 has also lost its top engine. However, the tank now has 150mm of frontal armour. So the frontal armour on the E50 got even better and its traverse speed has been buffed to 32 degrees a second from 26 which might make many E50 drivers very happy. However, the fact that it's basically lost a quarter of its engine power might make people rather upset. Gun has received a slight rate of fire buff to 6.25, and the accuracy has also been buffed to 0.3, and the aim time reduced to 2.1. Basically, the gun on the E50 is much, much better now. I'd say that the E50 is a much more competitive medium tank. I'd say that it's Pure acceleration in the straight line of course has been reduced, however its its ability to turn itself has increased and its guns got more dangerous. With this new gun with such an incredible rate of fire, I might have to look at revisiting the E50. I think it's a very selfish tank that is strongly promotes a passive play and sort of promotes non-team play, but as a solo tank I think it's quite strong. I think that these changes make getting to the E50M all the more special, being able to have the top engine on the E50M, along with the dramatically increased track traverse, makes the E50M feel that little bit more special. However, one thing that I will add now is that the DPM on the E50 and the E50M is the same, and the only thing that you get is a penetration increase. I think all in all the changes to the E50 have been good, and I think the tank is probably slightly buffed now, rather than nerfed. But don't be surprised when you get into 8.8 .8 and you find that your tank accelerates slightly more slowly. So all in all guys, those are the changes to the German tanks. I hope this has been helpful to you and you now know more or less exactly what you need to know that's really important about the next patch. All in all, German tanks are able to accelerate slightly more slowly, but their traverse speed has been increased. The E50M has received uh, a frontal armor buff, as well as buffs to its gun, significant buffs to its gun actually. I might be thinking about picking up the E50 again if I can get it on a special, and just play it as basically a solo tank. Anyway guys, I hope this German video has been really useful to you. I'm going to be doing one of these for the others as well, I'm going to be doing one for the Russian, and also I'm going to be doing one for the different maps and how they're changing. If this has been useful to you, please think about rating it down below, I'd really appreciate it. And if you think this can help your friends, or your clan mates, then maybe why not link it to them? As always guys, thank you so much for watching, you've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.